What's up everybody? It's Candy Girl with my two cents. First of all, thank you so much for stopping by and clicking on this video. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you can get more videos from me. For all those people who have been hanging with me since day one and all of my new subscribers, thank you so much for your support. And I continue to look forward to the comments and um, all of the views from you all. So now let's get started with today's topic as you can see it's all about forgiveness so first of all thank you Dirk so much for your comment and for the inspiration for today's video and so without further ado let me go ahead and read the comment hey candy good video as usual thank you <laughs> I need some advice from you because you seem to be pretty smart on the best ways to handle things and have some reasonable and sensible advice thank you again <laughs> How would you suggest that I deal with family members that I totally can't stand and hate? Obviously, you can pick your friends, but you cannot pick your family. I'm moving from the Chicago area to Phoenix this summer, and I'll be away from all of them. I'm hoping that this will help. But my parents are moving out with me, too. And I know these family members that I hate are going to occasionally fly out to Phoenix, and they're still probably going to want to visit me or see me somehow. Should I show up to their funerals when they die, even if I hate them, and if they have verbally, mentally, and physically abused me and totally done me wrong? Please and thank you. Woo! <laughs> okay, that's deep. That's so deep. And I think a lot of people can identify with the problem that Dirk is speaking of. First of all, we can pick our friends, we can't pick our family, and we know that nobody's perfect, including our family members. So, especially with people who matter so much to us, they are the ones that can hurt us the most because their opinion matters, their actions matter. These are the first friends that we've had, the first people that we've ever loved. And so they can have a profound effect on us in the things that they choose to do as it pertains to. So the question that I'm pulling out of this is, um, should I remain cordial, respectful, and dare I say even friendly when these people come around? How do you conduct yourself um, when these people come around? And when it's all said and done and they're laid to rest, should I pay respects to them even though that they've affected me in such a profound way? So the first question, I will say um, definitely yes. You should be friendly, loving, respectful, cordial, whatever you can at that moment, do it. And here's why. Forgiveness is not necessarily saying that what they did was okay that what they did is something that is um, in any way shape or form acceptable but what it is saying is that you will not be shaken or moved by somebody else's actions the person that you are deep down inside your core values your strengths your ethics your morals that those things are not compromised by somebody else's actions it also prevents them from hurting you more than what they have in the past see what they did was just a moment in time in your life whatever comment that it was whatever verbal or physical or mental abuse, that particular act probably took no more than five minutes each time that it happened. But us choosing to replay that moment in our minds makes the effect far outweigh the act itself. So what I would suggest is to minimize the effect that it has because then they don't have as much power over your life and over your emotions um, than it would otherwise. This also allows you to um, not carry on that baggage to other relationships that you have in your life. So for example, if somebody was abusive towards you, sometimes you'll walk around extremely guarded against new relationships that you have and therefore you're not able to fully enjoy the magnificence of relationships around you 
solely because you're trying to prevent the pain from the past from replaying itself in another way, shape, or form. <clears throat> when it comes down to when they're actually in your face, how do you deal with that? How do you continue to maintain some sense of decorum and respect while they're around you and you know that these things are um, not going away as far as your feelings because you can't make your feelings go away overnight. But what you can do is give that, make that an opportunity to show and to practice your growth as an individual. So it might be hard, but it's kind of like exercising. When you first start exercising, it's extremely hard. You might only be able to do the warm up, and then after that, you're totally spent. Okay, so it's hard. But if you keep coming back, you're going to be able to add more time to your exercise and eventually complete it, increase your endurance throughout the workout and be healthier as a person. So the same thing applies in this situation. It's going to be hard at first for you to be able to be friendly, cordial, loving, respectful, all of that stuff while they're in your face. But you got to keep going because that's what's going to make you stronger as a person. And as the more opportunities present itself for you to practice that growth, the stronger that you'll be and the better that you will. So welcome those opportunities to practice your self-control, your forgiveness, and your love towards other people. And something that you can keep in mind is think about what that person did to you. Can you think of any moment in your life where you could have possibly have done the same thing to somebody else just in a different way or just in a different um, environment or context? Naturally, you would say, yes, that would have happened or that has happened, but I was flawed at that time. I was hurting at that time. I didn't have the tools and the skills to be able to address those issues in a constructive way. So I would hope that that person can forgive me because I was just doing the best that I could at that time. Well, the same thing is applying to those family members and those friends that have hurt you in the past. And not only are you imperfect, but so are they. And just as much as you would hope that people would forgive you for the things that you've done, you should also extend that to other people as well. Because what you put out in the world as far as forgiveness and grace and understanding is what you're also going to get back. And remembering those times where you have also been flawed gives you a little bit of compassion for the things that they're dealing with and their faults and their shortcomings. Going to their funeral is something that um, I would encourage you to do because at some point in your life, you are going to forgive them. You are going to move on and you're going to see the value, no matter how big or how small, that they brought to your life. And you might regret not going to their funeral just to say, thank you, I forgive you, and to pay your final respects. But hopefully those things all together has helped you kind of put some kind of frame of mind and perspective on your situation. Please be feel to leave another comment, Dirk or anybody else who's dealing with the situation. I would love to give you my commentary. But until next time, you all, love and blessings. Bye.